Average pre-meds get average advice that lead to average results. And on average, 60% of pre-meds get in nowhere. Here's the thing, what actually works often goes against what people are telling you. To get into the best med schools, you have to not be normal. I would know. I graduated from UCLA Med School and I've helped thousands of people get into their dream med schools. I've done it by sharing unconventional advice. Starting with number one, eat The cruel reality is that the more something sucks, the better it is for you. It really sucks to run five miles. It really, really sucks to study for your OCHEM quiz on a Sunday night. But the more sh something is, the fewer number of people will do it. So if you persist and get that thing done, that separates you. And if you separate yourself again and again and again, nobody will be able to catch up. They'll look at your research publication or your 520 MCAT score and they'll think it must be nice. But you know, in the background, you've been eating shit for thousands of hours and it must be nice that they weren't around for that. Number two, you can do it all. When I was pre-med, there was this meme that you could only choose two out of three. You could have a great social life, you could be competitive for med school, or you could be in tip top physical and mental shape. Over time, I realized and saw so many examples of this not being true. This is a lie. You can have it all. If you wanted, you could get into a top 20 med school. No gap year. Be extremely fit. Hang out with your friends. Spend time with your family. Sleep eight hours. You don't have to sacrifice any of it. There's no physical law that says that this is impossible. Will you have to work hard? Yes. Will you have to cut out things like mindlessly scrolling social media? Yes, but there is no reason why you can't be that best version of yourself, attaining your professional goals, living your best personal life. It starts with that mindset, believing that this is possible. Because once you do, that allows you to move on to the next step, which is figuring out how to do it all. And you'll see it's actually a win-win situation. A lot of the best pre-meds I've seen balance their professional and personal life and ad comms are impressed by that. You'll see in our application database that Steve, who earned a full ride scholarship to a top six medical school, also spent a ton, thousands of hours playing club basketball at Cornell. And just like Steve's application, we have eight full AMCAS applications that earn acceptances to the best programs in the country doing it all. Over 18,500 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the application database link in our description box below now. Number three, forget about medical school. For two hours every single day, please do something that is not related at all to getting into med school. You're not put on this planet just to be a doctor. I believe you're here to be the best version of yourself. And one part of that identity may be being a doctor, but there are so many other facets to you. You cannot let those parts of you go. And if all you care about is getting into med school, then you'll be happy to know that at my UCLA interview, all I talked about was playing League of Legends, refereeing intramural basketball, and coaching youth basketball. Adcoms have seen pre-meds, medical students, and doctors before. They know hospital volunteering, scribes, and EMTs like the back of their hand. What's most refreshing is just a cool, down-to-earth, relatable pre-med. It's these unconventional pieces of advice that separate pre-meds who become doctors from those who don't. If you're applying to medical school in the next year or two, you don't want to make any mistakes. Our pre-med gala students that submit their applications on time have a 100% acceptance rate, and it's only because we work so closely with them. In fact, we can only take on four students per month until we're full for the cycle. So if you're interested in working with us, click the application cycle advising link down below now to book a free strategy call before we can't fit anymore. Number four, the woo-woo stuff, it works. When I was in elementary school, I remember wanting to hang out with my friend Wanda after school. One day, she told me that she had to leave immediately so that she could help her mother recycle cans. And to this day, when I think that things are hard for me, I think about that eight-year-old, Wanda, taking the bus by herself to school and spending hours after school digging through trash. I think about how hard her mother works and how she does it every day to put food on the table. I'm unbelievably grateful for what I have and the position that I'm in. Gratitude, it works journaling, it works. When I didn't feel like myself in college, I saw a therapist. Therapy works. You're going to be in your own body and in your own mind for the rest of your life. Try this stuff and be open-minded to it because it can help. Number five, be a tryhard. Celebrate being a gunner. When I was in college at UCLA, there was a night that I had left lab late. I remember seeing some classmates head in the other direction to have a fun night out of the town. And I don't know if they meant it or not, but I remember hearing them whispering try hard. I remember them giggling and walking away. That night, I walked home. I felt like I wasn't normal. 
I felt shitty about myself, that I wasn't cool and I would never belong. But today, I can't believe that I felt upset for trying hard. I can't believe that I let other people gaslight me into thinking that putting in some effort and caring about a project to get it done, that that was lame. If you're a try hard, if you're a gunner, celebrate it. It's an awesome thing. And it's rare, honestly, in this world to see people put in extraordinary effort brainwash yourself into loving hard work. Now, to be clear, you don't have to scream it from the rooftops and hold it over other people's heads. You can be silent about it. Don't ever let anyone make fun of you for working hard. Number six, Amor Fati. When I was doing my tryout rotation at Columbia, my mom got really sick. I was sleeping overnight on a couch in the hospital and I got a phone call at 3 a.m. from an emergency medicine doctor in Los Angeles who asked me for consent to do a procedure on my mother. When one of our students were studying for the MCAT, her father passed. There's a lot of terrible things that will happen in our lifetimes, and sometimes there are things to learn. But sometimes there are just scars that cover over the world. Regardless, this is the life that we're given. We can only understand and appreciate the good because we've experienced all the bad. Amor Fati is Latin, and it means the love of one's fate. It asks that you not only accept, but also embrace the hardest parts of life. They're just as necessary as all the positive things we get. So when that next obstacle slaps you in the face, that's an opportunity for growth. And when something terribly life altering happens to someone you know, recognize that that's a reminder to be grateful for all the health that you have today. Number seven, don't trust yourself. The human brain is amazing, but it's also comically terrible. So write stuff down so you don't forget it. And at the end of the week, review your life, your calendar, and see if you did the things that you said you were going to do. Look for objective data because your fantastically smart brain is going to try to convince you that you're wrong. If you commit to the gym, if you commit to a meeting, Show up because your brain is going to say, yeah, it's probably not that important. And I won't gain 20 pounds if I miss the gym today. Don't trust yourself. If you like this video, you'll love this one here about the 10 hard truths I wish I knew when I started my pre-med journey. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.